so with National Breast Cancer Awareness Month coming up soon, we were talking about how important it is for the technologists and the radiologists to work closely together to get the best possible images and yes. convey information back and forth. And as you know, if the tissue's not on the images, we're not going to see the finding. And so you were telling me about a patient where positioning was such an issue, and I just wanted you to relay that story. Um, well, I um, this was back in the early 90s. I had been doing mammography at an outpatient facility um, for two to three years and working with four or five other mammographers, and we were good techs. Um, but our radiologist uh, hired a positioning specialist to come and spend a week with us and give us some tips and techniques on doing better and the difficult patients and just um, learning techniques that could improve um, to get further back. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, things that she really um, came across the whole week was never dismiss how precious this tissue, posterior tissue, is or could be. Mm -hmm. um, and it just over and over. And so we went through the class, all of us improved um, using her techniques that she taught us. And so the next week I'm in mammography and I'm doing screenings. Um, and a 42 year old woman came in for her yearly screen and her mother had had breast cancer at age, uh, in her early 40s. Mm -hmm. So high risk patient. High risk, mm -hmm. yes, but no problems, Right. just her annual. So I used the techniques I had learned and I did her mammogram. Um, at that time we were using film, so I had to let her have a seat, told her I needed to develop the um, film and then I would let her know if we were done. So I go and as they're coming out, I was putting, like we've learned, the CCs facing each other and the MLOs so that you could compare mm -hmm. the amount of tissue. Um, and and as I look, I'm seeing the MLOs are beautiful. Yes, they were better than what I had been used to doing. And the right CC, definitely more tissue, exactly the way that we had just been taught, you know, tweaking. And the left was what I normally was used to getting. It was okay. Mm -hmm. That image was perfectly fine to put through. And as I looked at those films, I wasn't happy with me because I realized I was missing posterior tissue on that left mm -hmm. CC that obviously I got on the right. And that right front view CC was more than we gotten the year before. And so I decided that I was going to just be upfront and honest with the patient and go back in and explain, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, but I could do better. Could do better. Yeah. I could do better. Yeah. So I go back in and I told her, I said, hey, there's nothing wrong with these images. But we just went through <laughs> a week of, of uh, with a positional um, specialist and I did better on the right. I just think that I could do better on the left, you know? And it was up to her because to do that, I had to repeat the image. Mm -hmm. She had to be compressed again you know, and, and so forth. And she, without hesitation, said, yes. Go for it. Absolutely. We did. We did it together. We got further back. And I knew I got further back before I ever developed the film and was expecting more tissue. What I was not expecting, and Dr. Berg, it's been 30 years, and it still is in the front of my mind. That image came out and I put it up and compared it with the first left CC and there was the mass. And this was not gonna be good for her. And I almost missed it. It was good enough to put through. My doctor would not have called her back because Cindy missed more tissue, no. It was because I looked at that and with what I had been taught the week before, I decided I wanted to be better. Mm -hmm. And so um, a few months go by and I'm working and my boss said, hey Cindy, 
there's a woman who wants to say hi to you, wants to see you, and I'm going to bring her back, which was unusual. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I said, okay. So um, here comes my boss with this woman, and they're down the hall, and as she's approaching, I don't recognize her, but I did realize very quickly that she was undergoing chemotherapy and had lost her hair. And as she gets closer, she stretched her arms out and I see tears just dripping down her face. And she says to me, do you remember me? I'm the one that you did the extra view on. You saved my life. And I just wanted to say thank you and give you a hug. And I was in my early 20s and I'm telling you I was face to face, literally face to face with good would never be enough for me again, ever. I had to be better. That patient's life depended on me deciding I was not just going to be a good mammographer, I was going to continually challenge myself to be better. And when better was achieved, then I would strive to be the best. And 32 years of doing this, there's not a day that I go to work that she doesn't go with me. <laughs> she is with me in my mind and every single patient deserves better, my best. Um, in my opinion, 12 months is too long for a patient to wait for me to get it right. Well, it can be life-changing. Obviously, we'd much rather find it when we can just see it as opposed to the patient feeling it. That's and right. That's right. I think one of the things that is worrisome is these days, of course, women are told that breast self-exam isn't that important anymore. True. So who knows how long it may have been That's true. if you hadn't redone that picture. Yes, um, yes. And you're right, it all comes down to the individual woman and doing our best each time, each and every time. And yes, yes. Putting ourselves in her shoes, what would we want? Yes, and absolutely, right. absolutely. Thank you for all you do. Well, thank you. I always say, you can't read what you can't see, and it's our job to provide that. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> Take care.